So if you're one of those people who scoffs whenever someone says that feel-good movies like Mamma Mia are incredibly important, you might not like all of what I have to say, but it's really important that you stick around to the end because I've got something to tell you. Mamma Mia 2 Here We Go Again is, by the way, first of all, now that I think about it, a really fast and the furious style title with its little colon in the middle of it, but I didn't really come up with that reference. Miel did, so um, yeah. Mamma Mia 2 Here We Go Again is the sequel to the 2008 ABBA musical adaptation starring Meryl Streep, Amanda Seyfried, Colin Firth, Piers Brosnan, and Stellan Skarsgård. While the original was based around the daughter's intent to discover who her father was, culminating in the decision that three fathers are better than one, this film covers the mother's escapades with the three love interests in the summer she became pregnant with Sophie. Now before I get started, I do have to clarify that I don't have some long-term allegiance with the original Mamma Mia movie, which it appears that a lot of people do. I actually only saw it for the first time about three nights ago, and I have to admit to it being incredibly clunky. The integration of the songs into the storyline was not well done, and while I understand the novelty of having 2008's A-list stars in the cast, I remember it was kind of like billed as like the greatest crossover event of all time after Hairspray, which I think also came out that year, 2008, 2007-ish. The voices of the men in particular were definitely not strong enough to cope with the music. That said, while I had a couple of consistency issues with the sequel, here we go again, it was honestly a pretty enjoyable cinema experience. While an almost complete removal of Meryl Streep from the sequel prevented a stronger storyline from appearing, more concessions were made for fragile singing voices, 10 years did improve drastically upon the cinematography of the first one, and the addition of Lily James was fantastic, even if it was counterbalanced by the relatively shaky performances of the younger dad's counterparts. Like I said as well, the story wasn't particularly consistent, considering the last movie came out 10 years ago when Sophie was 20, but this film, she's still only 25. So, there's a few storyline issues with this one. This movie isn't going to be for everyone, but no film is ever for everyone, and if this is a movie that is for you, and you'll know if it is for you because you'll be potentially excited to go and see it, I think you're gonna have an enjoyable time. It's definitely a lot better than the first one, and it's just not a bad sequel even though there are some consistency issues and there's not really any Meryl Streep in this one. But now that I've made my normal points about the review, there is something that I wanna say really quickly because I do believe that films like this are important for certain reasons. Something that I find myself repeating over and over and over again lately is that every film has an audience and it's something that I've been saying in regards to Mamma Mia and Mamma Mia 2 for quite some time now in addition to some other movies such as Annihilation, Ocean's 8, and the upcoming The Spy Who Dumped Me. The cinema I saw Here We Go Again in was packed with people who emotionally connected with this film. People who were laughing, people who were crying, people who left the cinema humming, myself included. I'm seeing the same amount and type of negative press that I see for a lot of other female-centric films, and it comes across as incredibly condescending this time, just as it does with all of the other ones. The thing is, is that Mamma Mia 2, here we go again, has a Rotten Tomato score of 72%. And every time someone says, oh, I'm not going to see that movie because it's a musical, and not only is it a musical, but it's a sequel to a musical, it just comes across as really mean and pathetic and just makes you want to appear as though you're a special little edgy snowflake who doesn't like the normal things that people like. Like, didn't we give up that attitude in high school? Like, didn't, didn't we leave that behind? Maybe not. There's so much talk about supporting diverse films lately, and so many of the people that I see standing up to support this are also the same people that I see bagging out Mamma Mia and films like Mamma Mia, films that are meant to be feel good or that are targeted towards female audiences. And to those people, I just wanna say this. 
We have films about normal people who have superpowers. We have films about people who overcome really difficult situations. We have films about all kinds of things and so many people see their dreams or their past stories represented in these films. Mamma Mia is a film about finding yourself. It's also a film about realizing that there are people that love you and care for you and that it's wonderful to have them around. Sometimes that is what a person's dream is. Sometimes that is the thing that we need to see reflected in a film. And it doesn't hurt that it's a fun little bop to sing along to or to dance along to. There is absolutely no harm in these kinds of films. I could understand if these were the only films being made, but the truth is, is that there's a lot of darkness and a lot of heavy stuff out there. And sometimes we just need a little bit of light in our lives. And I don't think that we need to be condescending towards people who look for that and who want that. Before you condescend to a film in the form of a punchline, remember that any film out there at any time could be the sort of thing that someone needs, that someone needs to get through a difficult conversation or to validate an experience that they had. Sometimes those films are our superhero films because why, why wouldn't we always wanna think that we're the good guy? Or maybe they're stories about coming out because that's what helps people get through those tough situations. But the thing is, is that if you keep making shitty comments about these films, not only are you going to discourage people from going to see them, but you're also going to discourage people from making them. And considering these comments are coming from film critics who I know for certain grew up with movies like Pixar movies or like Disney or lighthearted fun films that they ultimately saw something in and that even though they were only watching it for entertainment value when they were a kid, it enlightened something in them, it opened something up and it led them towards going and watching deeper, more artsy, more difficult films. One day you watched a film that was probably very entry level and that you just enjoyed for entertainment value and that opened up this world to you. Maybe you shouldn't discourage other people from finding their version of that. Or just don't be a dick, you know? Yeah, maybe just don't be a dick or I'll unsubscribe from you.